So Joan, thank you for joining in with this interview. Could you please introduce yourself? Yes. Um, well, my name is Joan McCarthy and I teach uh, nursing and healthcare ethics in the School of Nursing and Midwifery in University College Cork in Ireland. Mm -hmm. We have about maybe 1,400 students and there's about 50 staff in our school. Mm -hmm. I also teach on a master's program in end-of-life healthcare ethics in the College of Medicine and Health and I direct that program as well and uh, that would be mixed professionals, journalists, chaplains, social workers as well as nurses from different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what would you see as the main challenge for care ethics? Well, I mean, I see several challenges um, overall, but um, if I were to be specific at the moment, what I'm thinking about, uh, what, one of the things I'm working on uh, in my research is to draw up guidance documents on end-of-life care, specifically a guidance document on decision-making in end-of-life for our uh, people with dementia. Mm -hmm. And in drawing up the guidance document, I have to try and capture what's in our legislation in Ireland, what's in our regulations in Ireland, what's in the professional codes, etc., etc. And in doing that, I'm drawn towards focusing on principles because they line up with laws and regulations quite easily. The staff are familiar with them, so they'll be. I don't have to educate them in the sense of familiarity. But, you know, I'm not introducing some new thing. So I'm bringing in sort of a care ethics approach, I suppose, in a focus on individual, the way I analyze individual cases, or the cases I choose even, um, guide me. You know, I'm guided by the kinds of insights from care ethics to focus on, say, for example, not just a, a quandary case to do with a medical um, treatment issue, but to deal with a case that might involve issues around relationships in the family or relationships between professionals and patients um, and care issues. Mm -hmm. So so I suppose care ethics can bring me those, it brings me there, but I do have to do that kind of double work of trying to use it, but at the same time have a guidance document uh, that, that, um, that works with existing expectations of people and existing regulations. So I suppose the, the, the kind of care ethics doesn't lend itself easily to doing that kind of work. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a kind of a, a challenge for me. Yeah. Okay. A second a sort of a philosophical challenge I would have had with care ethics until I started reading more uh, John Tranta's work and Margaret Urban Walker, the work of Margaret Urban Walker and so on, would have been that a care ethics wasn't, for me, didn't have enough of a feminist edge to it, or a feminist, it wasn't drawing sufficiently on the work of feminists in relation to the gendered mm -hmm. history of care and so on, you know, that it has been the work of women, that, that has an impact on the way it's understood and privileged or, un or, or marginalised in society and so on. So, but I've been refreshed, I suppose, in meeting John Tonto more recently, and I've been drawn on the likes of Margaret Robert Walker, Hild, uh, Linda Hildeman, and so on, and these authors, <coughs> for me, um, give that feminist uh, reading to, help, to uh, care ethics um, that I think um, uh, is very useful and helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's clear where the challenges are and which ones you are picking up. So thank you very yeah. much for sharing that in this interview. Yeah, you're and, very welcome. Uh, enjoy the conference. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Yeah, best of luck with your project. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>